Good morning, I'm Chris Balkman, Research Associate with the Department of Crop Soil Environmental Sciences Department at Auburn University. I'm gonna to talk to you today about pod blasting peanuts from optimum maturity. Uh, here we are uh, approaching the fall of the year. Uh, we'll start digging peanuts here in about three weeks. Uh, so it's, it's prime time to start thinking about that and how we're going to decide when to dig those peanuts, which is always a, a hard decision and tough decision for, for uh, many people there to call and on and decide on uh, when's the best time to dig. So uh, here we have a method that is a little bit easier in making that decision. Uh, it gives you a good look at the peanuts and a good uh, average look of those uh, uh, different pods on that plant since they're all the time blooming every day when they're setting those pods. That's what makes it difficult to decide when to dig. So this gives you a good look at those and, and you can see how we decide on the optimum digging time. Uh, one of the first tools there that we'll need for this is a, just a low pressure uh, pressure washer. Uh, this is a small one. You can see it's 1600 PSI. Uh, anywhere in that range of 12, 1300 up to about 16, 1700 PSI is a good range. Uh, you don't need one of those big, hard, fast ones, those huge ones that are on most farms. Just these real small ones will do a really good job, and that'll keep you from busting a lot of those peanuts pods up, uh, more of the immature ones, so that way you can get a good look of those pods. Uh, here you, you can, uh, just a wire mesh basket that we've made there to put those pods in to blast them. Uh, you can see here on the uh, left side, we have a floor in it, uh, subfloor there. That this will this will hold the pods up there all from the bottom, allow that water to flow through and come out the bottom of it. Uh, it just keeps those peanuts in there as we spray them with the pressure washer so that we can um, uh, knock off that outer layer of those holes to see what color it is underneath. Uh, and here we have the peanut profile board. Uh, this is what we put those on after we blasted them. We took off that outer layer of the hole that's revealed the inside so that we can see that color and that color helps us decide on maturity um, of the hole there and see uh, how close we are to digging. Uh, so with that being said, what we do is, um, uh, it's, it's much like soil sampling, soil sampling when you're pulling those uh, uh, collection plants there to pick off the pods from. Uh, here's a shot of a peanut field here getting close to dig. You can see it's lapped up well. Looks pretty uniform across it, but as most farmers know, soil types are different. Um, that also in turn may, may have different disease spots out there or problem areas in the field. So what you want to do is uh, randomly select sites to collect those samples from across the field, much like soil sampling. You know, you can zigzag across there and, and pull those sites, and that way you can get a good average uh, of that field. Uh, so, so in those spots, you can look down, uh, try to select a spot that's uh, uniform plants, free from disease, um, it, because that disease would deter your sample. Uh, you won't get an accurate reading there from, uh, uh, from, those, from those disease there being on there. Just pull up a small bunch of those peanuts from these different locations and uh, examine those pods, because even though it might not show disease on top, you, you could be having pod rot or something there underneath or underground white mold. So you, you want to look at those pods, make sure they're good and healthy, and that way that's going to give you a good sample uh, reading. If they have disease on them, that's going to deter it because those, those pods are in turn dying. So that's not going to be an accurate reading there when we put those on the board to look at maturity there. Uh, I isolate those plants. When you pull up a small bunch of peanuts from each one of those locations, you want to isolate those individual plants. Uh, look at the foliage on them. Look, look at the condition of the vines. Uh, like I said, let, let's look at them, make sure they don't have any leaf spot on them, make sure they don't have disease on them. And that way we know that plant's going to be there for the long haul until we get ready to dig it. Uh, th those plants in good shape can hold those pods uh, until they get mature. Uh, if they was eat up with disease or eat up with leaf spot there, what have you, that, that's going to shorten the life of that plant. Uh, those pods won't make it all the way to full maturity. Then once you isolate those little plants, what we want to do is pick off all the harvestable pods from that plant that would go into the combine basket. That way we get a good uniform sample of that complete plant. Uh, we're, we're picking off everything that the combine would pick off and blow into the basket. 
Uh, and then what you want to do is repeat that from those different sites that you pulled those plants up all across that field, isolate those plants individually, completely pick them off like what you've seen here in the picture, put all those pods together until you have about 200 pods and that's what we'll use for the sample. Once we have those 200 pods, we'll put those in that uh, mesh wire basket and then we'll take that pressure washer and blast off that outer layer of the hole, just as you see here. Uh, you can tell you don't have to have that uh, wand down there too close. If you get it too close to the pods, like I say, you're gonna bust them up. It's gonna be too much pressure on those. Uh, more of those immature pods, uh, for sure. You know, they have a lot of water in them, so they're easier to bust. Those harder, more mature pods are, are a little bit more solid, so it's, it's not as easy to bust those. But, but you've got to take into consideration those immatures so you can look at the different size crops that are on that plant. So that's the reason why you don't want to bust even those immature ones. As you can see here, as, as you begin to wash and spray those there with that blaster, you can see as it takes off that outer layer how they change colors. And like I said, that color compared onto that uh, profile board will tell us that maturity range. Uh, once we get all those blasted off good, uh, then we'll dump those onto the uh, board and begin to separate those out by the colors, just as you see here. Uh, the darker ones to one side, uh, going across the board to the lighter color, the more immatures, darker being uh, the most mature. Uh, I want, once we separate out those colors, uh, then we begin putting those, placing those on that uh, board uh, in those different maturity ranges. It's good to shell them open. Uh, that this way, you know, because not a lot of people can differentiate those colors uh, there on those holes and the percentage of them. Uh, like you can see how that board works, a different percentage uh, of a brown goes in one class, a different percentage of a black goes in another class, so forth across the board. So it, it's good to shell them open and we, we have different characteristics inside on those pods on how we determine uh, the maturity ranges there of them there. Uh, just like you can see here, just from this distance of this uh, picture taken here, you can see those peanuts to the far right that we shelled open. Notice how they're a copper color. Uh, that means they're fully mature. Uh, those peanuts have all the way um, um, uh, turned loose in the hole, so they have that tan color on the seed coat, and uh, they're, they're fully mature, and, and uh, so we have them on the three-day category. Uh, the next class there that you see next to it, you can tell that seed coat is still a lighter color uh, on the skin, but also you see those dark spots on it. Those are the oil spots uh, that are there. As, as the peanut gets close to maturity, that oil content increases, comes more to the uh, surface right there, and that's what darkens up those spots on those nuts. And that, that tells us when we get those real dark oil spots, uh, we're generally about seven days away there from maturity. That helps us place those on the board because like I said, looking at that hole, you can just tell it's dark. Uh, you can't tell anything else. That's the reason it's good to shell them open and look at the inside, look for those oil spots there as a telltale sign on the maturity. Uh, here's another uh, instance right here where you have one nut uh, when it's shelled open, that's copper. The other one is in that, um, like that seven day category that we just talked about. So uh, it, it's there uh, with those darker oil spots on it, but it's still a light seed coat. The nut on the left shows us that copper color skin, uh, being that it's uh, fully mature. Uh, so with it fully mature, we need a few more days to bring that other one on along. We call that a three to five day range right there. Uh, here for instance, you see a, a, a one that is immature uh, it is not dark uh, there on the outer layer of the hole that was knocked off by the pod blast. But then again, when you shell it open, it's begin turning uh, uh, tan copper color. And what's happened here is that peanut has turned loose. Uh, dry weather has come in, encroached on this field, and it's um, uh, not having any more soil moisture out there. We've sucked all the life out of the vines, uh, continue to go without rain and those peanuts have turned loose. And that's what you'll get in a situation like that when you begin shelling those open. They'll all fall over there in that three-day category and uh, they'll all be that copper color like what you see there. Uh, and you can see here, here's just an example um, 
uh, of those other categories, like the seven days, as we talked about with the darker spots. And then you notice in the 10 day category, uh, we have the light seed coat, but you don't see that um, oil spots near as distinct as you do in the seven day category. So uh, anytime you're looking at those, um, uh, what with a darker hull, they're gonna be in that 10 to 14 day range uh, without having those oil spots distinct. And you can, you can determine where they go, place them on that board by looking at those oil spots. Um, if it's just a clear oil spot, we usually have them uh, 14 to 17. If they start getting that color to them, we put them there about 10 days. And once they get real dark and distinct, we put them on seven days. And then as those uh, nuts begin, that seed coat turns tan, copper color, we put them there to three days. And then once we get enough peanuts there to, to break our projection line there uh, on that graph, uh, then we know it's time to start digging. Uh, like in this, this situation here, uh, he's got two distinct crops. He's got one early crop. Obviously, we went through a dry time. Then we've got a late crop over here. Uh, the, the problem is, is you got a lot to risk. When you're looking there at a crop that's, uh, say, half and half, uh, as we shell those peanuts open here, all those were copper colored on the inside. We didn't have any over here that was in that seven to 10 day category. Uh, in that situation, in my opinion, you just can't afford to wait uh, with those peanuts there um, in the ground. You've got so much risk to lose if it was to come in and start raining. Now, if you do have some moisture in the field, but the weather forecast is open, yes, you could wait and give those another uh, few days there and then fall in there and dig them and get them up out of the ground. But right here's your main money crop there. You got a lot of big, solid, harvestable pods there. And even when you look at this pile here, you see a lot of real immatures as you pick through there. You also see some damage there, like from corn bores and um, uh, lessers and so forth that would uh, uh, create problem with those. And that's, that picker's gonna separate that out and throw that light stuff out of the back so that don't go into the basket at all anyway. And uh, so really when you look at that pile there, there's not as much there as what you really uh, think uh, compared to this here. So uh, uh, certainly when you've got that higher percentage there that's in that copper or gold color, uh, it's time to go ahead and start. And notice how they're even not all the way black. You can see just some of them, they're really kind of just brown. Seems like they would be more over here in this 14 to 17 day category. Um, that's the reason it's always important to shell those open. Uh, so just a few things there to remember, uh, always a sample must be as good, a good representation of the field to be accurate recommendation for the digging. And also look at it a couple of times. It's hard to really get it exact by just doing one sample out there. So the first time you take a sample, uh, take it when you think you'd be about 10 days out from digging and then pull another sample whenever uh, your first sample said to dig. And that way those two checks will give you a, a better target on when the proper digging date is uh, to ensure that you get the top dollar for your crop. Because it's uh, very important when you think about selling the peanuts uh, by the ton, they're on the grade point average, and you may be looking at four to five dollars a point uh, there on a price per ton. So it uh, really adds up to a lot of money there per acre. Uh, thank you this morning for your time, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak to y'all there about uh, peanut pod blasting for maturity. Um, Chris, I had a question. Um, okay. Where do people get those um, charts, those peanut maturity charts? Yeah, yeah, they can contact us here at the uh, Wiregrass Research Station and we can send those out. All the REAs have those uh, scattered about the state and then um, uh, we, we try to pass those along. Uh, I think Syngenta put those charts out a few years back and uh, we try to keep some of those printed up here. Uh, they could probably even ask their Syngenta rep that's in their area or contact us there through the extension office and we'll get them so. All right. Any other questions? <laughs>